Welcome to Conversations with the Candidates. I'm Eve Noss, your host for this segment. Um, I have with me today Mike Rotundo, who is running for Ward Councilor in Ward 1. Welcome. Nice to see you. Nice to be here. Thank you. So let me ask you, uh, why are you running? Um, you know, it's funny. When Maureen decided to retire, um, you know, I started growing some concerns about Ryleside. And uh, I figured I could be a pretty strong candidate for it. And um, I'm immersed in the, the community, uh, especially being at work at um, Cafe Salerno. I hear a lot that goes on. And I figured it would be a, a pretty good time for me to step in the ring and, and run. So can you tell us a little bit about your background? Um, I know yeah, that I, I grew up in Everett. Um, mm -hmm. I migrated here back in, uh, um, geez, my, back in 97, I and my brother bought our first business over in Danvers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, we had an opportunity to buy Cafe Salerno a few years later, and we, we decided to, to come here. And uh, we had an option to live in Danvers or, or buy a house in, in Beverly, and we chose Beverly. So that's how we ended up here, just for work. And then you moved your fam with, with, with your family. Well, then I met my wife. I, funny, I, I met my wife cutting cold cuts at my deli over in Danvers. Uh, her sister came in, and, you know, I, I was just, she kept coming in. I just said, you know, Todd, I said, she's such a nice person. Why can't I find someone that's like her? And one day she said, I have a sister. You should meet her. <laughs> and that's how I met my wife, and I've been here ever since then. Very romantic. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you see as the, uh, the major issues in terms of Beverly as a city and your ward itself, Ward 1? Well, you know, my ward, we're in pretty good situation considering that we don't have to worry, worry about a, a Brimble Ave project being built uh, in Rileside. But, you know, a, a, as I'm walking the streets, I'm finding out a lot of people have displeasure with their sidewalks and their streets and, and the way they look. And, now, unfortunately, we don't have enough money to, to repair everyone's sidewalk and street right now. Mm -hmm. uh, as a whole, I, I think uh, Rileside's a great place to be. Wood One is wonderful. Um, what about the city itself? The city um, itself? Yeah. Um, the mayor's done a great job, uh, phenomenal job. When Todd and I came here uh, almost uh, 16 years ago, downtown was uh, really struggling, and I mean struggling. And the reality is if it wasn't for the coming center, uh, downtown would still be struggling. Mm -hmm. Montserrat College is a phenomenal, phenomenal resource for all the businesses on uh, Cabot Street as well. So, you know, with that being said. Okay. Um, tell us a little bit about um, what you, um, um, in terms of the, I'm sorry, I, I mixed up my, my questions. Um, what would be at the top of your agenda if you were elected? The top of my agenda yeah. as in for? For the city in terms of, um, well, you talked about sidewalks and yeah. uh, roads. Um, do you think that there are any other issues that you'd want to address? Um, you know, unfortunately, we're, we're in a, a situation, or fortunately, we're in a situation where there's a, there's a really big changing of the guards right now. Mm -hmm. And I can't really give an answer to something like that. Um, but what I could tell you is that I, I sit there and, and listen to whatever came a, across my desk, and, and uh, you know, I work very hard at it. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of time on the job, how, how much time do you think it would be uh, to devote to this particular I think, work? I think a lot more than what people really anticipate, to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. I think people, when they run for, for a councilman, um, I, don't, I don't think they really understand what it truly entails. Uh, because the reality is you have a lot of money that's crossing on uh, your path and you really have to get along with people to figure out how you're going to disperse of that and I don't think people realize uh, the enormity of that. So how would you work that out in terms of your own work schedule and your family? Well, you know, I'm very fortunate. Um, I own my own business and if I need to hire a few extra people to, to help me and fill in, mm -hmm. I can do that. Um, my family, I have a, a son that's 16 years old and a daughter that's going to be 15 years old, and they're pretty uh, self-sufficient at this, this point in their life. So I'm in a pretty good situation, to tell you the truth. I don't work Monday nights. Mm -hmm. um, and if I needed to take a Thursday night off or if there was a special meeting, uh, I can get out early enough where I can do it. Okay. Um, for people who aren't familiar with you, what would you say is your style, 
your personal style in terms of working with other people or trying to get a job done? Well, reality is uh, I see hundreds of people a day and uh, I converse with them a lot. And, and there's always a give and take in every situation. Uh, I work with a bro my brother and I, I don't think most people know what it's like to work with a family member. And um, it, it can be challenging at times, but you, you really do, you have to give and take and, uh, and, and you, you're not going to make everyone happy all the time. Okay. I'm going to ask you a question about budget and fiscal responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, Beverly has a budget of about $105 million mm -hmm. um, that's overseen by the mayor and the city council. Yep. Um, tell us a little bit about what uh, kinds of um, skills you have um, or qualifications that you have that would uh, enable you to understand the budget and work with the budget. Well, I have to work with the budget myself every single year. Um, it, it's not quite as large as uh, 104, 105 million dollars, but you know, on a smaller sense, it's it's all about paying your bills. And the reality is, if you're not bringing enough money in, you can't make a payment. And um, so. It's, it's real simple, money in, money out, um, and, and you have to make sure that it goes to the right places. So in terms of the term fiscal responsibility, what does that mean to you? That means that you should be on the conservative side of spending and you should really uh, <laughs> make sure you don't outspend what you take in. It's, it's real basic and unfortunately sometimes people make it more than what it really is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But it's just like at your house. You have a budget that you have to work with, and, and you make sure that you, you fulfill it. All right. So in terms of Beverly's budget, what do you think um, it takes to balance the budget in terms of the city? Intelligence. Intelligence, <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I, I think that there's something that a lot of people are missing is that, unfortunately, or again, fortunately, Brimble Ave is going to be done. Um, but the reality is the city needs a constant flow of money. And, and that's one of the ways that it can do that. Okay. Um, and what do you think are the uh, a couple, uh, two or three of the budget issues for Beverly in terms of uh, it could either be assets or income or expenses that Beverly faces that are things that need uh, attention? Unfortunately, uh, the budget has to, it has to be balanced every single year. And, and the, reality, the reality is um, the city does it. They do a great job. Um, so I can't really elaborate anymore on how they make their payments, but I do know uh, at the end of the, the year, they've balanced the budget and, and they do a great job. Do you see any areas where more money should be spent, in your opinion, than is currently being spent? You know, um, to be honest, uh, a lot of people, don't, I, don't, I don't think they realize the city workers that are in the city they run very lean um, and unfortunately there's not enough money to hire more people for city workers mm -hmm. um, and, and I also think that the police department might be running a little bit thin as well but for what, what I'm running for I can't really make that decision that's that's a decision that you know the mayor will come into and he'll make that decision right. and we'll have a discussion do you have any ideas um, in terms of um, sources of income that um, maybe could be um, well. The waterfront is a great. The waterfront is a great idea, and uh, unfortunately, for the past I don't know, 15 years, or I'll, I'll just say the the past 10 years, everyone's been pushing the black cow, and I'm selfish. I want the black cow there because it's going to drive traffic back down to the downtown area. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, if you don't get the other part of the waterfront set, there's never going to be enough income down there to help the city pay for its bills. And so someone needs to speak to the people down there and, and come up with a resolution on how they can create um, you know, um, the property down there. So that ties into my next question, which is about development um, in Beverly. Um, what are the issues, um, so that's one that you've mentioned, maybe you could expand on that a little bit. Um, what are the issues in your mind that need to be considered when evaluating a development project or development in general? I Beverly. think your neighborhood needs to be involved in it. And I think that the neighborhood should be the first people that uh, the city confronts and, and has a conversation with. You know, it, it's, it's nice that the city's been built the way that it is, but the reality is when, when the people you live with, uh, they don't have enough information until the very end 
or until the project is going to be built. Mm -hmm. That's tough for people. And, and, and I, I can tell you that's what I've been hearing down at my restaurant. People will come down and, they're, and unfortunately they're not happy with the way the project's going. But, you know, the reality is no one's really sat there and said, they're going to build on this piece of property regardless. And if, if you don't step up and, and side with this, you're going to lose something that's going to help your neighborhood decrease the flow of traffic. Um, so I think the, 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 the reality is you, you really need to inform your neighbors mm -hmm. on, on any project you're going to do, whether that's going door to door and sending people out and saying, there's a meeting tonight, please come. Mm -hmm. Because not everyone's so busy. What I see is everyone's busy and not everyone reads the newspaper every single day. So you might miss something in the newspaper. And I think it's the city's uh, obligation to get the word out and say, hey, this is what's going on in your community we think you should attend. So you think at the, so uh, to sort of front load it in terms of any, any development project or issues in Beverly should be front loaded by including the neighborhood I, itself? I think it's, uh, it's, um, it's imperative because when you take your neighborhoods as a whole and you collectively add up what they pay in taxes, mm -hmm. they pay more in taxes than any one property owner does, period. And how would you determine if you're a city councilor whether the project is, is um, doing what it's supposed to be doing for the city uh, at the end? Well, I, I'm trying to understand the question. Um, just give me an example and um, I might be able to answer it a little bit better. Um, well, let's take the waterfront. For, well, let's take something else. Let, we'll take my next question. Okay. Which we'll tie it in. Uh, so the next question is, in your mind, are real tourists, uh, are, there, are there or what are tourist uh, possibilities for Beverly. Well, so it's something that I, I have, have good, to consider have, and then evaluate. Okay, I've got great ideas, especially okay. for the waterfront. And again, I'm just a person that's running for ward. I'm not an at-large guy and right. I'm surely not running for mayor. But the reality is you have to be a little bit creative. So if you took the waterfront and, and you know, have you ever been down there? Yes. Okay. And so if you, if you look at it, if you had someone that had enough money and, um, enough creativity, I think that you could actually cantilever some type of building that's over the water and part of it could also sit on the land. Mm -hmm. And with that, you could probably come up with, um, you know, either small boat rentals, um, some shops down there. Because ret retail is, is what really drives people into uh, a restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I see as the waterfront. And I do see a couple of restaurants down there. More than and, one. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you can't just have one. Um, you can't have just one restaurant on the water. You just, you can't. Um, and, and everyone will benefit from that on uh, Rantoul Street and Cabot Street because the reality is if you have a restaurant that has 100 people and you have a restaurant that has 200 people, and if, if you're driving people from outside of the city, mm -hmm. eventually it will creep up Cabot and Rantoul Street. And everyone talks about the, uh, the North End effect. Right. Well, the, the, the North End effect is, is there for a reason. You're in a historic part of Boston, and you have retail shops, and you have businesses. So when they talk about the North End effect, if we had the waterfront, you would absolutely get the North End effect in Beverly. Okay. So, um, all right. Um, in terms of development issues and projects, um, you touched on the uh, Brimble Avenue yeah. uh, project, which uh, just got voted on this a few days ago. Yeah. Um, so what do you see as the pros and cons of uh, the project? Well, the, the pro is that, unfortunately, oh, again, I, I, I use the word fortunate because there's two sides to every story, but right. um, everyone will absolutely enjoy the strip mall when it's there. And, uh, and, and everyone will. Um, and I really do feel badly for the people that live on Brimble Ave in that area mm -hmm. because I, I really believe that their life is going to be affected by it. And, um, and, and, and we were affected by it. Uh, Ward 1 or Rileside was affected by it when the coming center came. Mm -hmm. But it was only affected for a short period of time. And if, if everyone works together, they'll, they'll figure out a solution. Um, again, and, and I said it, coming center was phenomenal for Beverly. Uh, and so hopefully the uh, Brimble app, um, project will become phenomenal for Beverly as well. So um, if you were elected, um, would you want to be involved in the process of uh, 
that particular project, the Brimble Avenue project? Oh, abs absolutely. Okay. And what do you think you've learned about it in the last few months? <laughs> well, being informed is, is truly um, something that was brought to the table because at first uh, I couldn't understand how the project was being done. And mm -hmm. there was a lot of misinformation out there. And a gentleman came to me and said, Michael, I have to tell you something. You're not, you're not seeing this the way they're doing it. Um, the land swap is there for a reason. It's to help alleviate the traffic problems. And a lot of people don't understand that. Mm -hmm. They can build whatever they want on that piece of property. They can build a chemical plant, an asphalt dump, whatever they want. I would rather see something like uh, a strip mall than whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and when that was brought to me, I, I realized, you know, you make sense and I understand where you're coming from. So, okay. Um, I'm going to ask you about the. Uh, this is these are all areas of development. The McKay School, yeah, um, up on McKay Street, mm -hmm. has been sitting empty for many years. Yep. Um, do you have any ideas about what might? You be know, done with I, it? I'll tell you. I sit around a lot. My brother and I, we have conversations, and, and it doesn't really mean that it, you know it's going to happen. We have conversations at the restaurant with a lot of the people that live in the community, mm -hmm. and um, you know, if, if the city can sell it. And, and make enough money off of it and make enough taxes off of it, then sell it. But um, I'll tell you, if they can't, they have, a, I think, a, a pretty good spot where our police station is, is in a really tough situation. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I, I've never done a study on it. And, and again, this is just the person that sees that, that building empty. I think it's it's pretty centrally located for a police department and a fire department, mm -hmm. and and you already have a structure there, and I don't know why it can't be retrofitted into something that's like that. Mm -hmm. Everyone talks about the police station going down to the coming center, but I, I don't know. Is that really a good spot? I mean, there is there is a piece of, or a parcel of land, if I'm not mistaken. You're right. That's been set aside. Perhaps. So now you have a traffic problem. With I, I think there's what four thousand, five thousand people that that work in that place. Plus the train. Well, the train. I, I think the train isn't so much an issue because you do have two underpasses or mm -hmm. overpasses mm -hmm. to get through, and they and they do it now. Um, and if you go straight up to to North Beverly or as you're heading towards North Beverly with Henry's, you can still get through there. So right. I look at that spot, and it, it is pretty centrally located. But I don't, I don't think putting a, a police department or a fire department at the coming center is such a great idea. Mm -hmm. Just you can see the flow of traffic in the morning, at night, oh. and if there was an emergency, what would happen? I get caught in it all the yep. time myself. So, um, so you think it would be a good place to perhaps have the police station or the well, fire station? I think either way that the, the, the city can benefit from, A, converting it into some type of municipal building, using it as a police station, a police station or, uh, or a fire station. Mm -hmm. uh, but if they, can, if they can create revenue with it, I'm all for it. So revenue would be created in terms of? Condominiums or um, some type of uh, a private housing, not, not public housing because... It has to be something that generates income. Right. Okay. Uh, so you started to talk about the waterfront, mm -hmm. um, and you said that you would see, uh, in terms of development down there, more than one restaurant. Yeah. Some shops. Yep. And uh, how far would that go under under the under the bridge and well, around the corner? I, I'm not sure if I know the person that owns the piece of property's name. I'm not sure if it's uh, Kinsey or not, mm -hmm. but. I think that that gentleman uh, and his wife are probably two of the people that you, or what the, that the city really needs to speak to. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, they need to be on board if they want something of that nature. Okay. Um, do you think it's a high priority or a low priority or medium for the waterfront development in terms of the city? Well, I mean, when, you, when, you, city? when, you, when you're talking about income, it, it, it kind of is a high priority mm -hmm. just because every single year as people retire, they retire, they, you know, uh, have health insurance and, and they're having a pension and new people have to fill their void. So you constantly have to have money coming in. Um, my fear is what happens when you build and you build and then there's nothing left? What happens then? Do you think that's a danger? Uh, I don't know if it is. City? I, I don't know. It, I, don't, I don't know if it is. Yeah. But, um, I, you know, when... <laughs> I grew up in Everett, and I, I do remember um, Chelsea and Everett 
um, um, Chelsea and, and Beverly, um, Chelsea went to receivership and Beverly that year could have also gone into receivership. Mm. And being from where I was, I could never understand how could that have possibly happened to such a great city? How could Beverly even be in contention mm. of being in uh, receivership with Chelsea? You're talking about the schools or the city? I'm talking about the city. Yeah. This was back, uh, geez, back in the 80s, I believe. Mm. Um, and I don't, I don't know if you recall that, but I've been here since '86. Yeah, so at one time, the Be Beverly and uh, was in contentions of going into receivership, and and Chelsea actually went into receivership. Yeah. So, so we would. Want so to that see is that kind of a that yeah, I hope it, I don't think it will ever. Right. I don't think it will happen. Uh, I, again, um, the mayor's done a phenomenal job setting the city up. Um, so in turn, we talked about the police and fire station. Is there anything else, any other ideas in terms of what the needs are um, that you haven't already discussed? Uh, I, I don't know what else you could possibly do with that piece of property. I, I mean, you have a brand new school that's already behind it. Mm -hmm. um, so to, to make it another school, just, you know, I think you have two options. You either privatize it and you sell it to someone that wants to develop it, or you let the city retain it and, and put something or retrofit it if there is money to do it. Yeah. Uh, and and like I said, I, th I think the police department is is uh, it really needs to be done over. It truly really does. I'm gonna. We are almost out of time. I just wanted to ask you about schools. Um, do you yeah. think that there? Uh, what are the biggest challenges facing the Beverly schools? If you have anything to truly. say about that, yes. Cell phones, and the computers. We have an issue, and uh, I, I think that somehow. The cell phones are truly disturbing students. Hmm. Um, you mean during the school day? Just in general, yeah. Yeah, I think that's uh, a priority, and, and there's going to there's gonna be a way to uh, figure it out. So but what should be done about it? I don't know. I, I don't have the answer. I wish I, wish I had, but I, I just I see what's going on, and uh, I think that cell phones are a detraction for a student. Hmm. And computers as well? Well, at, at some points, yeah, it is, absolutely. So we I, have, yeah, go ahead. I, like, I have two kids, and I see them, I see, I see them, and I see their friends, and, you know, sometimes uh, it's a lot easier to be on a computer and look like you're busy, yeah. or are you surfing the, the net? So I, I think it can be a problem. So what grades are they in? Right uh, my son is a, a junior, mm -hmm. and my daughter's a freshman. Okay. So they're in the laptop program, the one-to-one -one laptop? Well, my son's at the tech, so he doesn't have that program, mm -hmm. but... Uh, they actually, they did have the program at the tech for one year and they uh, discontinued it. Hmm. Uh, and the high school does have it, so right. I, I can see the challenges with it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we are almost out of time. Is there, um, I'd just like to ask you uh, if you'd like to just talk about for a minute, um, why should we vote for you? Why should you vote for me? That's a tough question. <laughs> That's the ultimate the, question. It really is. Um, well. I chose to live here. Uh, I didn't grow up here. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I really love this community. <clears throat> I have my business here, and I raised my family here. So. Okay. So what do you think that you can do for your ward? That, uh... I'll be a strong voice for them. If they ever call me, I'll be there. And uh, I will absolutely answer any questions that are thrown at me. Um, all right. So this is Eve Noss. Um, I'm your host for this segment. I've been speaking with Mike Rotundo, who is running for Ward 1 City Councilor. Thank you for joining us. This is Conversations with the Candidates. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you.